நண்பர்களுக்கு வணக்கம் எல்லோரும் நன்றாக இருப்பீர்கள் This program is brought to you by Guruji TV. This YouTube video is a translation of the Tamil video of a renowned astrologer Jyotish Mahaguru Aditya Guruji. In the live video of today, let me clarify the doubt of my YouTube subscriber. The question is from Selvaraja. Selvaraja, you have asked a doubt today. Selvaraja, what you ask is Guruji, this has been my doubt since long time. I hope that my doubt will be clarified. My doubts are as follows. Can the Venus attain the state of both retrograde and combustion? If it is retrograde and combusted, how to predict the effects of major and minor planetary period of Venus? That is Dasha and Antar Dasha of Venus. For example, for Pisces ascendant, if there is conjunction of Sun and Venus in 8th house in Libra, while the Sun is debilitated here, will the Venus get combusted by the Sun here? My third question, what is the effect of the conjunction of 6th and 8th house lords in the 8th house? Well, there are few more questions that continue in the course of the video. Usually, the subscribers ask doubts from their own birth chart and it is a common human tendency. Your question is, can Venus be both combusted and retrograde? And in case, if Venus is both retrograde and combusted, how would be the effects of major and minor planetary period that is, Dasha Antar Dasha of the Venus. I repeat your question, alright? For Meena Lagna, that is Pisces Ascendant, what is the effect of the conjunction of Sun and Venus in the 8th house in Libra, where the Sun is debilitated? I have already explained to a similar question, that is, Sun in 8th house for Pisces Ascendant, where the sun is debilitated and lost its strength. Many of my subscribers get doubts as they haven't read my written articles completely. I have read so many articles. Yet, since I find some questions interesting and useful for my followers, I would like to answer to this question. You have mentioned in your doubt that sun is debilitated and is an enemy's house. You know, the sun is debilitated, that is correct, but it is not in the enemy's house. The sun is debilitated in Libra or Tula sign, but the sun is not in enemy's house. When the planet is debilitated, there is no enemy status. You can only use one Sthanabala status to any planet and cannot assign multiple Sthanabala status at the same time. There is another question, what would happen if Sun got Nichabanga, that is if its debility was cancelled. Additionally, there is a doubt on whether 6th, 8th Lords can get Nichabanga. You have also added the question, how the conjunction of 6th and 8th house lord would be. I have chosen this question as it covers many points such as 6th and 8th house lord conjunction, debilitation of the sun, cancellation of the debility of the sun. Let me explain your first question about uh, the retrograde and combustion of the Venus. These are two different stages so it is possible that Venus gets both combusted and retrograde. I have written already that the retrograde of Venus affects the marital pleasures of the native. When the benefits are retrograde, they will not be in the state to deliver their karaga or significance. It will strongly deliver the house effect. This is the truth. I repeat that when the benefic is retrograde, 
it renders strongly the house effects whereas it lacks ability to give the karaga or significance when i explain astrological facts i choose the words very very carefully to let you understand the intricacies of vedic astrology did you notice that i mentioned that the planet will lack in giving the karaga or significance what is the main significance of venus the carnal pleasure that can be from a spouse or any romantic partner in a natal chart where venus is retrograde the marital pleasure will be denied or the natal will not be interested in the marital pleasures i have already written about this topic in my past article what is retrograde of the planet the planet behaves contrary to its usual or natural behavior i repeat the planet behaves contrary to its usual or natural behavior how does venus behaves naturally it delivers bed pleasures that is carnal pleasures for a woman it signifies the pleasure of a man and for a man it signifies the pleasure of a woman there will be a lack in this pleasure if venus is retrograde i did not mention that it will not render the pleasure at all rather i say the pleasure will lack there are many intricate rules listen carefully to my words i said the carnal or bed pleasure will be denied or the person will not be interested in those or the native might be interested but not the spouse even if one does not have interest then the marital pleasure is not fulfilled venus is the planet that renders the karaka or significance of marital pleasure how to identify if a spouse is interested or not this is a very important question okay i repeat how to identify if a spouse is interested or not apart from venus you should check 7th house indicating spouse 12th house indicating bed pleasure or carnal pleasures and 3rd house indicating fitness needed for the bed pleasure astrology is an art of combining and applying different rules in case of the planet is not in a state to render its karaga or significance then you have to check the related house karaga and its effects apart from venus check the lord of the 7th house indicating spouse who's responsible for the marital pleasure the 7th house is the house of marriage check the 7th house lord the 7th house and also the 12th house that indicates the enjoyment of the pleasure and the 3rd house indicating the fitness needed for the bed pleasure you can come to a conclusion after checking all these factors when venus is retrograde it affects the marital pleasure hinders the pleasure given by the spouse and other worldly pleasures as well if you are in love with a girl you don't love her merely for carnal or bed pleasures you get super excited or you feel elated when you realize when a girl lives for you willing to do anything for you cooks for you and takes care of you when you realize that a girl is so dedicated to you it brings immense pleasure hopes and a lot of positive emotions and happiness the same applies for a girl as well when a girl believes that a man is so dedicated to her she gets elated all these will be affected when venus is retrograde well let us come to the next question what is combustion we say that mercury has no combustion dosha or ashtanga dosha the reason behind this is that mercury is very closer to sun for almost 252 to 300 days in a year since mercury is always in closer degrees with the sun for most part of the year it is said that mercury has no combustion dosha or ashtanga dosha but venus has combustion dosha 
but it does not suffer complete combustion dosha unlike other planets. Venus cannot be uh, more than 54 degrees apart from the sun and it is always within two houses from the sun and cannot be farther. So when Venus is combusted and retrograde, definitely the karaga or the significance of Venus will lack. In your question, you mentioned that it is Mina Lagna, that is Pisces ascendant. The sun and Venus is in conjunction in the 8th house. I reiterate a point that the Venus does not disappear in the 6th house and the 12th house. In general, it is said that the 3rd, 6th, 8th and the 12th are the houses where most planets disappear. I reiterate that it is important to know the exceptions along with the rules. Venus does not disappear in 6th and 12th houses. You have to memorize all these and fetch the necessary rule and the exception at the right time while predicting a chart. All these helps in better prediction. You need to also observe that while I say that Venus does not disappear in 6th and 12th houses, it implicitly means Venus disappears completely in 3rd and 8th houses. If Venus is in 3rd house, it completely disappears in that house. While 4 houses that is 3rd, 6th, 8th and the 12th houses are specified as hidden houses for all the planets, only 2 houses are specified for the Venus. It means that in the other houses the Venus does not disappear. Having said the above, when Venus is in 8th house, it disappears completely and the Sun gets Subhatva by Venus conjunction and the Venus significance will lack because Venus gets weakened by combustion. So what will happen during Venus Dasha when the 8th Lord disappears in the 8th house? It gains the strength to give the house effects but lacks to give the planet Karaga or significance. I repeat, it gains the strength to give the house effects but lacks to give the planet Karaga or significance. When Venus is retrograde, the marital pleasure will be lacking. To explore more, you have to check the natal chart of the spouse. Will the native never enjoy the marital pleasure or will the spouse be interested or will the spouse be unhealthy etc. There are many many factors. To derive the conclusion you have to research the respective houses and the significance of the planets. All these come out of experience. In brief, whatever Venus renders as Karaga or significance will be lacking when it is retrograde. So you must learn the complete significance of the Venus planet. I have written about these in my book Jyotidam Innu Deva Ragasiyam. I have listed the significance of the Venus planet in my book. If you go through the book you will definitely get an idea. I noticed a point in your question that sun is debilitated and an enemy's house, partially correct. It is true that the sun is debilitated but not in the enemy's house. The debilitated house is different from enemy's house. It is important to assess the strength of the planets. If we derive points wise calculation for a planet's Tanabala strength, give 100 points if the planet is an exalted house. Give 80 marks if the planet is in Mool Trikona house. Give 60 marks if the planet is in its own house. Give 40 marks if the planet is in friendly house. And give 20 marks if the planet is in the neutral house. And give 10 marks if the planet is in the enemy's house. And finally give 0 if the planet is in the debilitated house. If the planet has got Nichabanga, that is its debility is cancelled, then you can give 50 to 60 marks to the planet. 
However, if it is Nich Bhanga Raj Yoga, then you can give 120 marks to the planet. Nich Bhanga Raj Yoga happens if only it is in conjunction with an exalted planet, that is the planet with complete light or it is aspected by an exalted planet. For example, if the full moon aspects a debilitated planet, then it is Nich Bhanga Raj Yoga where you can give 120 marks as the strength of the planet. If exalted planet is in conjunction with the debilitated planet, then the planet gets Nich Bhanga. For example, in Libra's house, where sun is debilitated, it gets Nich Bhanga if Saturn is in conjunction with the sun though this is a Pabatva or Maleficent conjunction. Therefore, Sun gets Nichbanga here, yet it becomes Pabatva or Maleficent as its conjunction is with exalted Malefic Saturn. You have added a question that what would happen while Venus is in the 8th house and gets combusted? What happens if Venus is combusted? The Karaka or significance that is supposed to be given by the Venus will be given by the sun. The sun will deliver the significance or karaka of the planet that it combusts. It will not only be delivered during the sun dasha or major planetary period, but also delivered during the sun's antar dasha, that is minor planetary period. During the dasha of the sun, the significance that cannot be delivered by Venus in combustion with the sun will be delivered by the sun. From one point of perception, the combustion of Venus is good for Mina Lagna or Pisces Ascendant. Did you notice? I did not make a statement that it is totally good. I said from one point of perception, Venus combustion is good. This combusted Venus, if it is aspected by Jupiter or waxing moon, then it is better. If it remains as a mere combusted planet, it is bad. Can you imagine the reason behind this? Because here, when Venus is combusted, it loses the strength to deliver Karaga or significance, but it has the strength to deliver the house effects. Anyway, Venus is a natural benefic, so it will not deliver strong bad effects. It has the strength to deliver the house effects definitely and it delivers longevity to the native of the Pisces ascendant. Venus is a benefic, not a malefic, so it delivers the good house effects of the 8th house such as unexpected fortune, life abroad, earning money in a foreign country or at a distant place. I hope now you can understand my style of prediction. Hope you will understand to a certain extent how to distinguish between the significance of the planet and the house effects. You have requested me to teach the good and the bad significances of each Bhava in the natural zodiac. Definitely we will publish those as videos and I will talk about this on my Win TV program which is telecasted every Sunday morning. These how significance videos are going to be definitely lengthy ones. All the 12 houses of the zodiac have both good and bad house karaga or significance. You have also added another interesting question. The question is, will it bring benefits if the star of the planet is auspicious to the ascendant and the star lord is in its own house or exalted? This question motivated me to respond to this question. It, this is a very important question. There is conjunction of 6th and 8th house lord in the 8th house for the Pisces ascendant. You doubt that this conjunction will definitely bring problems. It is not easy to predict the future of a human being as there are lot of knots that must be united first of all. The life is not engaging if you know everything up front. Let us now see which star is in the 8th and the 6th houses for Pisces Ascendant. Since you mentioned that it is auspicious to the Ascendant, in the 8th house Libra, there are Chitra Nakshatra, the star of Mars and the star of the Ascendant. I repeat, for Pisces Ascendant, 
in 8th house the conjunction of sun and venus 6th house lord is debilitated and there is cancellation of the debility of the sun though sun is debilitated here it can still combust the venus the logic behind this is the concept of debilitation is based on the difference in the light of the sun received by the earth this video is going to be very interesting and i'm going to respond to the question of course the conjunction of the 6th and the 8th house lord is bad in case if these planets get subhatva that is aspected by jupiter or aspected by waxing moon then the good house effects of the 6th and the 8th house will happen there is an additional question that if the lord of the star on which venus resides is auspicious to the ascendant and if the lord of the star is exalted or in its own house how to predict for example if venus resides in the chitra nakshatra whose lord is mars is exalted here note one more point that exalted mars is in parbatva because it is natural malefic and gets exalted the mars parbatva or maleficence does not factor when we predict the effects of venus which is on chitra nakshatra i have mentioned that the planets which reside in the houses whose lord is exalted will do benefits in the similar fashion if the planet resides in the star whose lord or nakshatra lord is exalted it does benefits astrology is a delicate art please observe my words keenly i say that the natural malefic should not be exalted but on contrary i say the planets will do benefits during its dasha or major planetary period provided the house lord is exalted and located somewhere and nakshatra lord is auspicious for the lagna this is the situation where the malefic such as saturn and mars exaltation is beneficial in a similar fashion if the nakshatra lord that is the lord of the star in which the planet resides is exalted then the planets will deliver great benefits during its dasha for example venus resides in the chitra nakshatra in libra whose planet lord is mars and is in the 11th house definitely the house effects of the mars that is second nine and the 11th house effects will happen through the 8th house the native will earn in foreign countries the house of gain the second and ninth house lord is in the 11th house the point that i'm going to say is very very important for mars dasha analyzing subhatva or parbatva of mars is significant but don't use subhatva or parbatva logic while assessing the dasha of the venus whose nakshatra lord or star lord is mars the subhatva or parbatva of the planet is of no use while checking the star lord or nakshatra lord for checking the nakshatra lord check whether mars is exalted or in its own house this is the only point we have to analyze this might be confusing yet if you understand this logic you can realize how to predict exactly the dasha of the planet let us see what happens if venus is on ascendant lord nakshatra suppose if the venus resides in vishaka nakshatra and the star lord of the vishaka nakshatra is jupiter and it resides in the 10th house which is jupiter's own house or exalted in 5th house then venus will deliver benefits even though venus is combusted and retrograde who lost its strength if it resides in the star of visaga whose lord is jupiter this will definitely deliver the benefits venus will be in a position to give all the benefits yet since it is combusted and retrograde venus becomes weak yet if the lord of the star where it resides is auspicious to the ascendant that is exalted or in the own house then the shortcoming of being retrograde and combustion is resolved and it will do benefits you can never predict a chart with merely one rule 
to predict a chart you have to explore more and more in detail so if nakshatra lord is exalted or in its own house and auspicious to the ascendant it will do benefits if it is inauspicious to the ascendant the result is different i would like to add a response that you would have never thought about it shall i let us assume the situation if the nakshatra is swati whose lord is rahu a shadow planet which does not usually does benefits to pisces ascendant if rahu is not in aries taurus cancer virgo or capricorn and resides in a house with parbatwa that is maleficent let us assume that it is in the ninth house in vrichika or scorpio and also parbatwa that is maleficent let us say uh, rahu is in conjunction with saturn well let me repeat venus and sun is in conjunction in eighth house sun is debilitated but there is cancellation of debility by combustion of venus which is a natural benefic rahu and saturn is in conjunction in 9000 scorpio venus is on rahu's nakshatra definitely the venus major planetary period that is the dasha will be bad because the nakshatra lord is very parbatwa or maleficent definitely you have to take into account the conjunction with saturn that is rahu's conjunction with saturn you might wonder i recently told that the parbatwa of the nakshatra lord does not really factor in and now you might think that there is a change in my statement watch this video again and again to understand you definitely can understand what i come to say of course it will be confusing for you if you understand at a superficial level i am sure that there is a great clarity in my statement here i mentioned parbatwa rahu the rahu in scorpio is not auspicious having said that rahu in scorpio is not auspicious the rahu's conjunction with saturn becomes more parbatwa it will be in a state to spoil the effects of the ninth house such as spoiling the father and fortune when rahu has no light the same rule can be applied for rahu in any house other than aries taurus cancer virgo or capricorn for example let us assume that rahu is in leo that is sixth house for pisces ascendant assume that uh, rahu is in conjunction with saturn in sixth house leo and if venus is in swati nakshatra rahu will do very bad effects and the native will suffer from the bad effects of the sixth house like deaths diseases and enemies imagine the situation where venus is retrograde and combusted by the sun and it resides in the swati nakshatra whose lord is rahu and rahu is in the sixth house in conjunction with saturn in leo which is not rahu's auspicious house then the venus dasha will be very bad the sixth house bad effects will be delivered through rahu which is a shadowy planet and also parbatwa here you must know now that you should distinguish between subatwa and parbatwa i mentioned if mars is in 11th house then the subatwa or parbatwa does not factor in whereas this rule does not apply for the shadowy planet rahu you should be able to identify that in which house a planet can give its effects identify in which house the planet is or with whose conjunction it is and check whether the planet receives the light or loses the light this is the concept of subatwa and parbatwa if you understand these basic concepts then check retrograde and combustion definitely you can predict well then try to understand 6th and 8th houses i said if the planet rahu is in the 9th house then it will spoil the 9th house and not deliver the benefits of the 9th house if rahu is in the 6th house it will give the bad effects of the 6th house if it is subatwa the result is different 
In case if the Saturn and Rahu conjunction is aspected by Jupiter, the result will be different. The prediction cannot be done on just one rule. There are many rules intertwined in astrology, so I cannot explain with just one rule. It is not possible to teach astrology with crisp rule or as a one-liner. There are many rules and exceptions. It is a great deal of permutation and combinations of the rules. If the star lord of Svati, that is Rahu, is in 6th house in Leo and is in conjunction with Saturn, I said the Dasha effects or the major planetary period of Venus will be bad. Let me add more points if Jupiter is in Aries or if Jupiter is in Sagittarius and aspects Rahu, then the effects differ. Try to distinguish the differences between Subhatva and Pabhatva. Then understand the related house effects such as 6th, 8th and 12th houses. You can definitely make good predictions. There is another question asked, is it favorable if lot of 6th, 8th and 12th houses haven't got Nichibanga Raj Yoga or cancellation of debility and Raj Yoga? The response to this question is yes. The Lord of 6th, 8th and 12th houses should not attain Nich Bhanga Raj Yoga. The highest marks were given when a planet attains Nich Bhanga Raj Yoga. So, when the 8th house Lord gets Nich Bhanga Raj Yoga, the only good effect of the 8th house is longevity. So, the native will live long and there is no other benefit. And the good house effect of the 6th house is to serve others through employment. And there is no other good house effect of the 6th house. The bad effect of the 6th house are deaths, diseases and enemies. So, 6th or 8th house lord attaining Nich Bhanga Raj Yoga is not good at all. In case if the 6th house lord got Nich Bhanga Raj Yoga and during the Dasha, no doubts the native will get diseases and that is what the Dasha of the 6th house lord will deliver. The native might suffer from deaths. We can very well expect the diseases and the deaths. During the Dasha of the 8th house lord, all the bad effects of the 8th house are given along with longevity. In general, 6th and the 8th house lord should not attain Nich Bhanga Raj Yoga. The next question is a long question and I would like to respond to this and even though the question sounds like Criticizing me, I find it interesting. Guruji, I have a doubt whether astrology changes according to the person. Dear subscriber, it sounds as if you are skeptical about my statements of predictions. I focus more on the questions that try to criticize me rather than appreciating me. There are many people to appreciate, but when somebody criticizes me, it says that either you should be wrong in understanding me or I would have made a mistake. Either of the two provokes you to ask such a question. Either you haven't understood me or I might have told something wrong. I found this question to be like criticizing me but you are criticizing me in a very polite manner. You have also added, Guruji, please forgive me if I am wrong. Guruji, while giving predictions of a person's chart, Please tell openly whether the result is positive or negative, even if it is 70% negative and 30% positive. But you always try to express in such a way that the prediction result is 90% positive and pleasing all the questioners. Well, this is the point where you are criticizing me politely. Your doubt is, does astrology change its color according to the person? Then you say in astrology, without the willingness of God, nothing will happen and 40% results can be predicted by us and 60% are revealed by God. Of course, you are correct. Then you are saying for many of my questioners, I say that they will get government jobs. I can recall very well that many of my WinTV questioners ask me whether they will get government jobs. I used to tell at least 9 people out of 10 will get government jobs. It seems this made you unhappy and you criticize me. Do you feel that I tell the prediction to encourage them? No, if I follow such a tradition of prediction, 
I'm not supposed to be revered as an astrologer, rather a mental health counsellor. The art of astrology lies in expressing the truth implicitly. If you had ever gone through the question and answer section of the Tamil magazine Malay Malar, I would have even responded to the questions of the readers for whom the government job is not possible at all. Sometimes if a client inquires about the death, I convey my prediction implicitly if the result is sad and negative. You blame that I never tell frankly the prediction, however the prediction is unpleasant. For a questioner, when I convey the prediction that the good time will start after April 2021, it means that the questioner's time is bad until that period. The questioner's mind can ascertain it. The implicit or hidden meaning of the statement is that good time starts after April 2021. It means that the time would be bad until April 2021. This is how the prediction must be told as per the laws of astrology. Do you expect me to say that the questioner's life will be hard until April 2021? That is not the right way. The questioner's subconscious mind will definitely understand that he has to be prudent until April 2021. This is the truth, one can feel it and this is how the prediction has to be told. Even if an astrologer predicts upfront a negative event, the astrologer has to try to convey the predictions from when the good time starts. The questioner's mind will certainly understand this and he will not incline to start any business until April 2021. The questioner will be more inclined to start a business post April 2021. I am not a person who always express the positive predictions. I also try to convey the negative predictions. I am an astrologer who does not hesitate to convey the negative predictions. Yet, I don't convey blatantly that the questioner's time is not good now and not to start the business now. An astrologer must always say some auspicious words and convey the negative comments implicitly. This is the primary motivation of astrology. The astrology is meant to say when a client will have good time rather demotivating from when the client life is going to be horrible. It is like a curse if I say that a client's life will be worst for the year. Those words should not be spoken by me and I can never say such demoralizing words. Astrology is meant to give predictions to the clients in a positive way. Observe my interviews on Win TV. I definitely say the negative comments. I never hesitated as you point out. Well, finally I repeat, an astrologer must say auspicious words and convey the negative comments implicitly. The link of my website is given in the description box of this video. This is accessible by all the users. And for Android users, the Google Play Store app link is given below in the description box. Thank you.